Hello guys, uh, so now we shall be discussing regarding the testes, okay. So our topic of discussion would be regarding the testes. Now coming to these testes, uh, first important thing you need to know that this green color structure in the center whatever I have drawn over here, right, whatever I am labeling right now, this is your testes, right. Now posterior to the testes, posterior to the testes, you see this yellow color uh, shade, Right, so this particular structure which is located posterior to the testis is called as your epididymis. This is called as your epididymis, right. Next, testis is hanged, right. Who is hanging this testis? Testis is suspended with the help of spermatic cord. Spermatic cord, okay. And finally, where is the testis present? Testis is present in a sac called a scrotum. So this is your scrotal sac, clear, right. So where is testis located? Testis is located within the scrotum, testis is located within the scrotum. After that, where is this epididymis located? Epididymis is located in the posterior lateral aspect, okay. Epididymis is located in the posterior lateral aspect. Postro lateral aspect. So that is a place where your epididymis is located. And third important thing is that testes are suspended into the abdominal cavity by structures called as spermatic cord. Okay. So the testes are suspended into the abdominal cavity. into the abdominal cavity by structures called as spermatic cord by the structures called as spermatic cord right next important thing is that where are these testes located actually so these testes are located in the posterior abdominal wall so they are located on your posterior abdominal wall they are located on your posterior abdominal wall. Now let us get into some of the details of this testis. The first important detail which we will get into this is that first of all how, how the testis is maintaining its temperature right. So even if the spermatozoa has to leave right even if the sperms have to leave so how the testis, ha the testis has to maintain a specific temperature. So how is the testis maintaining the specific temperature? So all of you should know this very important thing. For example, let us say this is your scrotal sac. Okay, this is your scrotal sac. Let us say there is a testicular artery that is entering inside. Okay, so arteries take the blood or they bring the blood. The movement of the blood within these arteries will be in this way. So arteries are bringing the blood into the scrotal sac, into the testis actually. Now surrounding these arteries, you have got plexus like this. So this plexus of veins whatever you can see, see all these veins together are forming a plexus that are surrounding the arteries. So this plexus is called as pampiniform plexus. This is called as pampiniform plexus. Now how is a plexus formed? How is a venous plexus formed? All the veins together they join to form a venous plexus. So veins they take the blood away from the testis. Yes or no? So the temperature within the veins is less in compared to the temperature that is present within the arteries. Okay. So the arterial temperature is high, the venous temperature is low. So what will happen is that the temperature in the arteries and the temperature in the veins, both of them are exchanged. Okay. So as a result, the testes are maintained under a specific normal temperature. Okay. So this is how uh, the normal temperature is maintained. So the normal temperature is maintained from the arteries that are bringing the blood and the veins that are taking the blood. So that is why this kind of mechanism you called as counter current mechanism. Okay, right. Let us now look into detailed structures of the testis over here. Now if you look at the testis, let us say the first important thing is, you know, it is like an almond size shape, right. So testis is almost like an almond shaped structure like this. Now within this almond shape structure there are many important structures which you can see. For example, 
on the posterior aspect of the testis on the posterior or on the superior pole of the testis over here you see another important testis right so this particular testis which you can see over here is called as mediastinal testis so what is this kind of testis over here this is called as your mediastinal testis so this testis over here is called as your mediastinal testis what is this mediastinal testis mediastinal testis is nothing but the modification of the connective tissue what is this this is actually the modification of the connective tissue so mediastinal testis is nothing but the modification of the connective tissue right now from this mediastinal part of the testis you see actually many uh, lobules like this you see from the mediastinal part septa arise and these septa divide the testis into many lobules so you know how many lobules are basically seen there are around 200 to 300 lobules that are formed okay now within this 200 to 300 lobules you see multiple structures in this way these structures are called as seminiferous tubules okay how many seminiferous tubules are there there are around 500 to 600 tubules right so what is happening overall the mediastinal testis is forming septa and these septa they divide the testis into different lobules and within each lobule you have got such tubules like this these are called as seminiferous tubules so these coiled tubules over here which you can see are called as your seminiferous tubules now next important next important thing what is happening all these seminiferous tubules they collect within this these seminiferous tubules are giving right they are collecting where they are collecting within this mediastinal testis so all of them they collect within this mediastinal testis like a network okay so this network of seminiferous tubules which are collecting in the mediastinal testis is called as a reti testis what is this particular test is called this test is called as a reti testis this is called as a reti testis now next important thing that is happening over here next important thing that is happening over here is that from this reti testis you see tubules are coming out right so these collection of tubules that are coming out and entering into the reti testis these are called as ductule efferent what is this thing these ducts which are coming out from this reti testis is called ductule efferent so this structure is called ductule efferent so this is called as ductule efferent now all these ductule efferents together they join what they join and form this particular structure called as the head of the epididymis so together they form a structure called head of epididymis together they form a structure called as head of epididymis now from this head of epididymis you see the remaining part of the epididymis that is coming out like this okay so what is the remaining part of the epididymis so this part over here is called as the body of epididymis body of epididymis this is called as a body of the epididymis and this particular thing over here is called as the tail of epididymis this is called as a tail of epididymis so what are the structures over here you can see uh, one is called as a head of the epididymis then body then we call it as a tail of the epididymis right so together all this entire formation we shall look at it uh, in a minute but before that one very important thing you need to know is that surrounding this testis you have got another structure called as tunica vaginalis in this way surrounding this you have got another important structure like this this is called as tunica vaginalis
you see this particular structure over here which I am drawing like this is called as your tunica wedge analysis. Okay. Next, surrounding this tunica wedge analysis, there is another important structure. What is this important structure? So, this is called as internal spermatic fascia. Okay. So, surrounding this, I am not drawing on the top. Okay. Why? Because I don't want to disturb these arrows over here. So, that is why I will just draw it till here only. Okay. So, this is called as internal spermatic fascia. After internal spermatic fascia, you have got the next important thing. This is called as your cremastric muscle. Okay. So, what is this? This particular thing which I am drawing is the second layer. This particular thing over here is called as your cremastric muscle over here. Now, after this, the next important fascia you have uh, surrounding this, this is called as external spermatic fascia. Okay. So, what are the structures which you have got over here? One, this one is called as tunica. Vaginalis. Okay. Next, this one is called as your internal spermatic fascia. Okay. And this one over here is called as your cremastric muscle. And this is called as your external spermatic fascia. External spermatic fascia. Okay. So, these are uh, the structures which you can see. And next important thing is that uh, if you look here, if you look at the testis here, this is called as the medial side of the testis and this is called as the lateral side of the testis. On the lateral side of the testis, you can see that this particular tunica vaginalis which is projecting inside, right? So, it is between what? It is between epididymis. Where is epididymis again? See, this part is called as your epididymis. See, this entire part on the top is called as epididymis. Okay, between the epididymis and between the testes, you have got this projection that is deep inside. So, this deep inside projection is called as the sinus of epididymis. Sinus of epididymis. This is called as sinus of epididymis. Why do we need sinus of epididymis? Is that sinus of epididymis is always present onto the lateral side. So that is the reason why whenever a testis is given to you, right? If you wanted to tell the side determination of the testis, this sinus of epididymis is very important. Okay. So this is useful for identifying the side determination. Side determination of the testis. Okay, that is responsible for the side determination of the testis. Right, so overall, what are the things you need to know? You need to know a few important things that these are seminiferous tubules, right? Seminiferous tubules. All the seminiferous tubules together, they first is your seminiferous tubules. All the seminiferous tubules together join and form the reti testis, and from there, the ductus difference or uh, ductule efferent will arise and from there the head of the epididymis then the body of the epididymis and finally the tail of the epididymis right so these are some of the structures which you need to know uh, regarding the testes so thank you so much for watching my video goodbye